Hey everyone, how's it going? Smite Pants Chess here, and today another TCEC game from the Season 17 Super Final between Stockfish and Leela Chess Zero. Quite a really good game today, actually. Stockfish is playing white in this one, and Leela's playing with the black pieces. So the opening began with d4, knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to f3, and now this b6, a3, and c5. Uh, so this is a Queen's Indian, and the black's plan is basically to Fianchetto. This is the end of the book after black plays c5 and Stockfish's first move here is to play d5 and obviously not take on c5 probably would give black some advantage. So Leela plays her first move which is bishop to a6 targeting the c4 pawn. So Stockfish defends this pawn and now Leela takes on d5, white recaptures and Leela now plays bishop to e7. So Maybe you're thinking black could win a pawn already, but if a knight takes d5, queen e4 check, hitting the knight and checking the king. And if the knight blocks, queen takes a8 can be played. So Leela goes bishop to e7, just a developing move. Knight c3 to defend the pawn. Leela castles and Stockfish plays g3, ready to Fianchetto. Rook e8, bishop g2, and now b5 from Leela. Stockfish castles king side, and Leela plays d6. Supporting the c5 pawn and allowing the knight to develop to d7. So Stockfish hits out of this pawn structure with b4. Quite a nice move actually because it stops the b5 pawn from moving up the board and unleashing this bishop on this diagonal. Um, so Leela just develops, supports her c5 pawn with the knight. And Stockfish develops with rook to b1 supporting that b4 pawn. So Leela further develops with queen to b6. Stockfish defends the pawn once again with the rook on d1. And Leela plays rook a c8, getting an open file, targeting this queen on c2. So Stockfish is the first to take on c5 with b takes c5. The knight recaptures, and then Stockfish moves their queen off this c file with queen to f5. Now here, as black, I was looking at knight c to d7 because I thought maybe black could unleash their rook against this knight. However, there's quite a nice move here with just rook b3 protecting the c3 knight. Uh, it's quite interesting actually how the computers use the rooks. They always seem to put them into weird squares that are not necessarily open files. Um, I went through this variation where black can now play rook to c4, but white gets the better of this with knight d2 hitting the rook. If the rook retreats backwards, white can play bishop to b2 after knight c5. Now play rook b4. Bishop c8 it's hitting the queen. The queen retreats back to b1. White all of a sudden has a very nice position with threats of a battery against this uh, B file. And you have to say white's doing quite well here. Maybe could put the knight into E4 next move and just retreat the bishop back to A1. But okay, back to the game. Leela didn't open the C file up. She just played G6, hitting the queen, which goes to F4, and now does play knight to D7, hitting this knight on C3. Instead of playing rook B3 here though, uh, Stockfish has played bishop B2, just developing and protecting their knight. Leela retreats their bishop back, which makes a lot of sense. Going to reroute it probably to g7 at this moment in time, or possibly could move it to h6 if this queen ever moves away off f4. Stockfish continue though with knight to d4, opening up their bishop, protecting this d-pawn, and maybe threatening to put their knight in to c6. Rook c4 though, so pins this knight on d4. Maybe also prepares the push of the b-pawn, because it's now supported by this rook on c4, which actually does a great job. So for this reason, Stockfish retreats their bishop back, which opens up the rook on the b-file. Bishop g7 is played, and the point is now there's three pieces hitting this knight on d4. The rook's also pinning it, so the bishop and queen are also targeting it. For this reason, Stockfish retreats the queen back, sensing the danger with queen to d2. And knight c5 from Leela. So from the human perspective, or my perspective at least, it looks as though black's actually doing fairly well now. They've got all the pieces out, got the open file, and the only problem really for black is to undo this bishop on a6 and possibly reroute it back to c8. So it looks as though black's doing fairly well. Saying that though, white is also not doing too badly. The next move they played was e3, which supports the d4 pawn and just stops this rook from attacking this uh, e2 square. So this makes a lot of sense. Maybe it also allows bishop to go to f1 in some variations, hitting this rook. But now there's a massive trade of pieces and Leela plays knight to e4 attacking the queen and the knight on c3. So takes is played, knight takes is played, and Stockfish gives up their bishop, with bishop takes e4. 
the rook recaptures and stock vicious calmly plays rook to c1 and there's a trade of rooks on c1 and the bishop just goes to b7 hitting the d5 pawn so yeah that was a mass trade of pieces maybe here Leela could actually go for a draw with bishop takes um, the knights in some variations and then we have opposite color bishops um, so I'm sure that may be tempting if I was a human player anyway it's black here but Stockfish continued here with queen to d3 so okay hitting b5 pawn hitting the rook uh, if bishop takes d5, then actually white wins here. Rook c8 check, back rank. Um, bishop f8, and white can play this nice move, just knight to f5. Because after pawn takes, they can take on d5, hitting f5, and there's no way to protect this pawn. Uh, the best move, or one of the best moves I looked at was queen a5 here. But then just queen takes d6, threatening to mate on f8. And there's nothing really black can do, it's, it's actually quite sad for black. Uh, the only move really is a check, and after king g2, what can black do in this situation? So yeah, bishop takes d5 here for black is um, a huge mistake. Sort of sets up a little trap by Stockfish by playing this queen d3 move. So anyway though, Leela senses the danger and retreats the rook back to the back rank. And now Stockfish just takes on b5, uh, wins a free pawn. If black even tries to pin this knight though with bishop a6, then white can just take on g7. King takes and just play a4 to support the knight. And even if bishop takes b5, a takes b5 and rook b8, there's always queen c3 check, king g8, and just queen a3. And if uh, queen takes b5, winning the pawn back, then white can just take on d6. And he's still a pawn up in this end game. We've now passed d pawn, which is quite far up the board. Okay, so in the game, Lila now decided to trade her bishop off with bishop takes a1, the rook recaptured. And now she played bishop c8. And Stockfish has played knight to d4. Stopping the bishop coming into f5. Uh, this knight is now really dominant in the centre of the board. And Leela is forced to put their bishop onto another square. Bishop h3. Um, maybe preparing some back rank ideas. If they can possibly get um, their rook or queen onto the back rank. However Stockfish is now a complete pawn up. And they do the best to try and trade queens with queen b5. Leela is not having it though, she retreats the queen backwards. Uh, but this just allows Stockfish to gain a bit bigger advantage, play rook e1, and just prepares to launch these pawns up. So rook e1, queen e7, and now just e4, putting their pawns on white squares. Coincidentally, the same colour as this bishop, or not so coincidentally. Basically, in end games, it's a good idea just to shove all your pawns onto the square of the bishop um, and stop it gaining free reign, basically. So queen e5 attacks the knight on d4 by Leela. Stockfish protects a5 to divert the queen, but simply drops it back to d2, still protecting the knight. And Leela goes queen f6. Uh, this knight is really pesky for black, actually, because it stops the queen coming into f3, where black could have tried to um, make the white king on g2, but this knight is just too good. And after queen f6, Stockfish just plays f3, sensing the danger. I've nicely highlighted the pawn chain here, all on white squares as I said before, just really limits the scope of this bishop. So Lila plays rook b8, gains an open file, but king f2, Stockfish pushed that king up the board, h5 for Lila trying to open things up, but then just king e3. Uh, this is quite unusual actually, I guess maybe Stockfish has sensed that there's some danger here on around this bishop on the g2 square, so they decided to launch their king up into the centre, I guess for the end game. I think the difference between computers and humans is that the computers can sense danger a lot better and just through sheer calculation know that the king is safe. Uh, but this looks really risky for me if I was playing this in a game. But queen g5 from Leela was played, the king goes back to e2. Queen f6 again and Stockfish just plays rook c1. Rook b7 is played, king to d3 and I suppose the king is actually really safe here. The knight again is a really dominant piece, protects a lot of key squares here such as the f3 square and the b3 square from this rook. So queen d8 was played by Lila next, and Stockfish just plays rook c6, hitting d6. Again, controlling more squares with this rook, controls the b6 square, stops the queen from jumping in. a4 was played next by Lila, and just queen c2 by Stockfish. So again, the knight dominates the b3 square, and now this queen's attacking a4. If black decides to protect this with rook a7, Queen b2, again, white just dominates more squares, dominates the open b-file, and dominates the c-file. Uh, if rook a8, just queen b4, 
and attacking d6, there's no way to protect this weak pawn. So after queen c2 in the game, leader plays king h7, and Stockfish just mops up another pawn, queen takes a4, h4 is played, the queen drops back for some defensive duties, bishop d7 is played, and weirdly Stockfish just ignores this threat and just plays queen c2. So why is this uh, exchange ignored? Well, if bishop takes c6, I think Stockfish will just take, if rook c7, there's knight b5, hitting the rook, and once the rook goes back on the 8th rank, there's c7, queen d7, and just queen c4. Um, and I guess this knight and two pawns here are worth far more than this rook on the 8th rank. If play continues on with takes, takes, king g7, and a4, white's just going to slowly shuffle their pawn up the board. King f8, a5 for instance, king e7, and I played through the variation with, it goes king c3, queen e6, and queen c6. Queen f6 check, but then comes king c4, takes, queen takes d6, king e8, and white's in an absolutely dominant position. And I believe this was something like plus 7, 8, or 9 here for white from the computer's um, assessment. But back to the game. So instead of taking on c6, so Leela played queen a5, trying to win this pawn back on the a file. Uh, rook c3 defends the pawn. h3 by Leela. Queen c1. Bishop e8. And Stockfish just plays g4. So puts another pawn on a white square. And all of a sudden this h3 pawn has become quite a target. Uh, bishop d7 was played. Rook c2 was played. And then just queen to a7. I'm not too sure what Leela is doing at this very moment. The d4 knight is just absolutely dominant and it's very hard for black to sort of infiltrate white's position. Stockfish continued with g5, rook b6 from Leela, and rook c7 hitting the queen and the bishop by Stockfish. So Leela has to defend this with rook b7. There's a trade of rooks and the king just hides on e3 for Stockfish. Queen b6 pins the knight, um, queen c2 is played, queen d8, king d3. Uh, and if queen takes g5 by black here, queen c7 is really strong for white. And after bishop e8, there's queen c8. Queen e7 to protect the bishop, but then comes queen takes h3. King g7, queen g3, threatening knight to f5. Uh, and if king g8, just h4. And white's got past a pawn, and it's preparing to play h5 and just crack open black's position. So white's very dominant in this end game here. Queen b6 is played in the actual game. Queen b3 was played by Stockfish, offering a trade of queens again. Leela just checks though and avoids the exchange, uh, but the king just hides on e3. Queen f1 though. Black's trying to cause some threats against white's position, but Stockfish has this all figured out. Plays knight to e2, defends the c1 and g1 squares from any checks. But Leela tries to get some counterplay with queen to g2, so okay, threatening to play, queen takes h2. However, now it's very important for Stockfish to have their own counter-attack coming. They play queen b7, hitting the bishop on d7. Queen takes g5 is played with check. And Stockfish just plays f4. Um, and this now stops any checks from black. And they've got to defend the bishop, so queen goes back to d8. And now Stockfish can start adding salt into the wounds. They play a4. The point is now if bishop takes this pawn off, then queen takes f7 check can be played. And if king h6, just play e5 and start launching these pawns up the board. So after a4, Bishop takes can't be played really, so king g7 was played. Again, Stockfish just launches the pawn. The bishop goes to g4 to move away from the queen and attack the knight. Queen b6, asking black, can we trade the queens yet? She says no. Instead, queen d4 then, king h7. The knight goes to c3, blocks the c-file, gets away from that bishop. Lily tries to block the pawn, but now comes just queen f6. Threatens to play queen takes f7. So if queen takes a5 here, queen takes f7 check, king h6, uh, queen f8, king h7, and again another check, king h6, and go queen g5, checking the king and picking up the bishop on g4. I guess if the king moves away, uh, queen takes, the bishop is very strong, even if queen takes um, the knight, I guess the king can run to f2, and it should be no problem for white to win this endgame. So after queen f6 though, Leela played king g8 to protect their pawn. Uh, but now comes f5. So again, cracking open black's position. Threatening to play f takes g6. 
We either played a crafty move, queen f1, so pinning the pawn on the f file against the queen. However, there's a quick check by Stockfish, and after king g7, they play f6 check. Queen takes f6 here, we'll just lose to a trade of queens, and then we just launch the a pawn and get another queen for white. So after f6 check, king h6 was played, and Stockfish has picked up another pawn. Queen takes d6, protects the pawn on f6, protects the pawn on h2. And White's got an absolutely dominant position with two pass pawns. Leela continued on, she played king h5, now comes a6 though, supported by the queen. Bishop c8 to attack, queen e5 check though, g5. And just knight to e2. Friends play knight g3 check and fork the king and queen. So the queen goes to b1. a7 is played. Friends get a queen on a8. Bishop to a6. So basically, black's friends play queen to d3 check and try and pick up a knight. Maybe get a perpetual check or a checkmate in this position. Uh, but Stockfish just defends quite easily actually. Queen c3 defends all the key squares. The queen goes to b7 to stop this a pawn. Queen d4 protects it. And Leela takes on e2. The king recaptures. Leela checks the king, but it just hides on d1. And now actually white's in a completely dominant position. Play continued on some more moves with g4. d6, g3. And white's just got to be super careful here not to make a mistake. They just play queen d5 check though. And after king h6, they get a queen. Two queens versus one queen. Uh, there's a trade. Uh, and if black plays g2 here, he just loses to queen g8, which will pick up the pawn and stop it from queening. And in the game, king h5 was played. Uh, but now just comes queen a2, g2. Queen f2 stopping black from getting a queen. King goes to g4. And white just gets another queen. And does a lawnmower here. So black does get a queen. Queen takes g1. King h6 and a lawnmower mate with queen h8 checkmate. So yeah, I actually really like this game by Stockfish. I thought it was a, a very nice game <clears throat> where they just kept control of the position with that super knight on d4 and controlled a lot of key squares. And it just shows how actually a knight can be superior in an endgame to a bishop in some cases. But anyway, hope you enjoyed my quick analysis of this game. If you did and you haven't already, please do drop a like, comment or subscribe to the channel. And hopefully you're all staying safe at home. And I'll see you soon for another game between Leela and Stockfish. All the best.